as, as Canadians think of, of parks, national parks, to, uh, Long Beach, Pacific Rim, Banff, and other places as being wonderful. They're, they're very much in our national character. And in fact, uh, public opinion polls that have asked people to state what, what, what kind of images come to mind when you think of being a Canadian. Uh, national parks are right up there about fourth. And way ahead of the Queen, who's about ninth, I think. And, and hockey around 11th, which is kind of amazing. But, uh, National parks are right up there, so we tend to think of national parks, for the most part, in a very positive way. But the argument, the notion that we're exploring through this study is that sometimes they're not such a good thing. Not just national parks, but other types of protected areas. And that sometimes the benefits that we associate with them do not always flow equitably to other groups. And in fact, some groups receive a lot of uh, the negative side. Uh, they have to assume a burden, or assume the burdens that sometimes come with setting aside land for this kind of purpose, uh, as opposed to other kinds of uses. So, uh, as this slide indicates, uh, parks in some cases have led to marginalization of local communities, and often that's in the Canadian context, it's First Nations communities, and we'll hear some of that tonight. We have human and wildlife uh, issues that have emerged in, in all uh, of our study sites in Canada, Tanzania, and Ghana, sometimes uh, leading to uh, problems for wildlife, and sometimes leading to problems for humans who come in to encounters with uh, wildlife. Exacerbation of poverty and erosion of support for conservation. So this is a particular concern where in some, in some places in the world national parks are under fire and we regard or have up until now as being something kind of essential for biodiversity, essential component for uh, conservation strategies is, is coming into question. So our project is aimed at trying to address those particular issues through, through a number of streams that address human and wildlife, uh, equitable benefits, uh, improved approaches to governance, which we'll hear something about tonight, and mobilizing knowledge between different interest groups, academics, communities, uh, decision makers, park managers, and other interest groups. So we have study sites in, in three countries, uh, Ghana, Tanzania, and Canada. You may say, well, why those three countries in particular? Uh, I don't want to go into it, but our, you know, our website will give you a lot more of the detail. But we have experience working in Ghana through a CEDAR project that Ken and I and others have been involved in. Uh, many of us have had uh, research experience at Pacific Rim. And as, when we searched around for some potential partners, we found people uh, on campus here and elsewhere at other universities with experience in Tanzania. And we looked at these three countries and the connection between communities and protected areas and so we're all struggling in different ways and also coming up with different kinds of solutions and ways that we think we can all learn from each other. So three countries but also different types of partners uh, that cut across all three countries. We have academics ourselves, students, graduate students and professors at different universities in Canada, Tanzania and Ghana but also uh, community organizations like the colloquial to the First Nations here in Canada, Canadian Parks and Wilderness Society, at Tofino Botanical Gardens, our, our community partners here in Canada, and in addition, agencies that are in charge of protected areas, the most significant in Canada being our National Parks and Parks Canada, and the Department of Fisheries and Oceans, who have a lead role in marine protected areas. Parallel organizations in the other two countries. And intent is, in a vertical way, the way this chart is laid out, we learn from each other, and we help develop capacity with each other. In, within country and across countries. I mentioned VIU involvement in a few places here. The number of faculty, Grant, myself, Ken, Nicole, Leslie King, Les, or Jen, and uh, Lance, uh, who are attached to VIU as uh, participants in this project, and a number of our students, uh, second, third, and fourth year students involved in doing different projects. So uh, two weeks ago, we had our first presentation worth, uh, in which we invited Bob Hansen to the uh, National Park Reserve, one of our uh, partners in this project who has led a human wildlife research uh, initiative at Pacific Rim and within Parks Canada. And he spoke to some of the issues that, uh, and some of the research has been undertaken to uh, better understand those issues at Pacific Rim National Park. And he sponsored several graduate students over a number of years and, and other projects. And he's one of the, in my experience, uh, as the experience I've had, one of the few agency people kind of reach out to community groups and to academics to try to engage in a learning and research activity. And he, in part, inspired this project through the initiatives that he had taken in the last 10 years. What he recognized along the way is the research he was doing and sponsoring uh, needed to be better communicated uh, to different uh, interest groups. So as part of our project, uh, he asked for funding to uh, approach Rick Searle to uh, 
take the research that had been taken place in Pacific Rim and present it and organize it in ways that uh, might be more accessible to other groups. So there's a process of developing a website and we have a couple of students who have been involved in kind of assessing that. Uh, tonight, I'm going to hear from uh, Eli and Dan, and they're going to talk in different ways about this flow of benefits and flow of uh, disbenefits, if you will, or costs between protected areas and surrounding communities, as well as the role of governance and better uh, improving the flow of benefits uh, to local communities. So just a brief word to finish off about our funding. Uh, it comes from SHRP, Social Science and Human, uh, Humanities Research Council of Canada, which funds the Canadian part of the research and the International Development Research Corporation, which funds the research that takes place in Tanzania and Ghana. Uh, this is a different kind of research fund that uh, differs uh, from many other types of the more traditional research funding sources in Canada in that it's intended and designed and evaluated on our ability to integrate and uh, build capacity between our different partners in the community. So it's not just academics going off and doing their traditional kind of research, but it's about this sort of, these sorts of connections. And knowledge mobilization, which you'll hear uh, a bit about tonight as well, is a key part of this project. So a number of us are really trying to focus and better understand what we mean by knowledge mobilization, that is, creating information that's accessible, and how and to what extent that information influences changes on the ground or decision making.